My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the solutions, if you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 285. Please turn to it, page number 285, the very first problem on the page, number 112. In 112, we are told that we have tick marks that are equally spaced. Yeah, that are equally spaced, which is a very important information, obviously. And then it looks something like this. Here is our zero, and then at the third tick, one, two, three. This is our x, and then we go one, two, three, four. This is our y and it just goes on. The question simply is how much is y? The question simply is how much is y? Let's see what they tell us, shall we? In the first statement. In the first statement they tell us that x equals to half. Well if x equals to half and we can clearly see that x is located right here. x is located right here at the third mark. One, two, three. At the third mark which tells us that three ticks, this, this half must equal three ticks. And therefore that implies that one tick mark must equal one six. And then y we can count again one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Y is located at the seventh tick mark. So if one t equals one over six, then seven t must equal seven times that amount, and that's uh, y. First in, first uh, first statement does the job quite nicely. A D B C E. A D B C E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Now the reason I actually finish this entire process, most of the time as you know, we do not actually waste our time finishing the process. It's because only, it was only a two-step process and I couldn't help it. Uh, on, but it is actually was a waste of time. As soon as we realized that we have the value of the three T's, three T's equals half, we were done. If we can figure out the value of three T's, we can figure out the value of seven T's. It's simple enough. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement they tell us, in the second statement they tell us that uh, y minus x, y minus x equals two third. Well y minus x, as we can see from here, y is located at the seventh tick mark, x is located at the third tick mark, so y minus x represents four tick marks. So that, uh, this tells us that four tick marks, four tick marks equal two third. Again, if we know the value of four t's, we can figure out the value of seven t's. The second statement is enough also by itself. The answer is D. Each of this statement is quite sufficient to answer the question. Now, just for learning purposes, we're going to finish it up because it doesn't take that, that long actually. So if 40 equals 2 third, that implies that 1T must equal 2 third times 1 fourth. And then 2 is going to cancel out with the, with the 4. And what I'm trying to point out here is that, what I'm trying to point out is that, just like before we found that 1T was equal to 1 sixth right here, when we found that 1T was equal to 1 sixth, that's exactly what we find here. The information in the two statements never contradict each other. They always substantiate each other. Do you understand? Let's go to the next one. Number, number 113. Number 113. In number 113, we are given a, a triangle. They do not tell us what particular kind of triangle it is. It could be any old triangle. It does not need to be right angle triangle or isosceles triangle or an obtuse or a, or a cute triangle or equilateral triangle. It just says in triangle ABC. So we're just going to draw, draw a triangle here. So here's our triangle. It looks something like this. Here's our ABC. And we are told that in this particular triangle X is the midpoint of AC. So here's our A to C and we need a midpoint here. Somewhere halfway through, so let's, let's first draw, so we can look at the midpoint easily, right here. X is the midpoint of AC, we are told that Y is the midpoint of 
BC. Immediately we realize that distance x to y is going to be half the distance of A to B. They further go on to tell us that R is the midpoint of x to C. x to C, R is the midpoint. So we need to break it up into a half one more time. And R is the midpoint of this guy. S is the midpoint here. So before we do any work at all, we must realize that that the base of this triangle, base of triangle R, 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 C, S, in triangle R, C, S, the base is R to S, which is one quarter of the original base AB. Similarly, similarly, the height of the triangle, which is from here to here, let's give it a name here just so that we can talk about it. The height of the triangle in, in triangle, in triangle R, C, S, the height of the triangle is from C to this point here. Let's give it a name here. So we have A, B, C. Let's call it D, E, and F. So the height of the triangle is from C to D. A, 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 B, C, and this is D. This is the height. R, uh, C to D is the height, which is also the one-fourth of the original height, height of the triangle A, A B, C. The height of the triangle ABC is from C to F. So C to C to D is one quarter, one quarter of the height of the triangle ABC, which is from C to F. This is very important for us to realize because now that we know that the triangle in, tri in triangle RCS, the height is one quarter of the triangle ABC and the uh, height is one quarter of the triangle ABC and the base is also one quarter of the triangle ABC. So that tells us that in triangle ABC, or rather the, the area of the triangle ABC, area of the triangle, uh, rather RCS, the area of the triangle RCS is going to be one sixteenth, one sixteenth of the area of the triangle ABC. 116 because it has a base that is one quarter of the original base. It has a height which is one quarter of the original height, original height of the triangle ABC. Now that we understand that part, let's see what they get, what, what sort of information they give us in the first statement. In the first statement, they're telling us, in the first statement, they're telling us that the area of triangle ABX is 32. Let's look at ABX, shall we? The ABX that they're talking about is this, this triangle right here, ABX, ABX. The base of the triangle ABS, uh, AB, I put down ABC, ABX is what I said here, ABX. As we can see here, as we can see here, the triangle ABX that they talk about in the first statement, let me just make sure that's what it is. The, the area of the triangle ABX is 32. ABX. The triangle that they talk about in the first statement, ABX, this triangle, original triangle, a, a, the, this triangle ABX here, has the same base as the original triangle ABC. They have the same base. But the height of the triangle ABX is half the height, the original height of ABC. So in triangle ABX, we know that the base, which is which is AB, base is same. The base of triangle ABX is same as the base of triangle ABC. The bases are the same, but the height is half. The height of triangle ABX is half the height of the triangle ABC. Since it has the same base but half the height, that tells us that the area of ABX will have to be half the area of triangle ABC. Okay, keep listening. Well, they tell us what the area of what they tell us what the area of ABX is. ABX is 32. They tell us that implies. Therefore, we know now because area of the ABX is 32. That tells us that 32 must equal one half of the triangle ABC, which in turn implies that the area of the ABC must be 64. ABC must be 64. Now where is that going to get us? We are done. The question was, what's the area of R, RCS? The question was, what's the, what's the area of triangle RCS? 
that's what they're looking for, this triangle right here, this, this top triangle right here, what's the area of this guy right here? Well, we just found it, this is 64, and RCS is, as we said, the triangle RCS is 1 16th of the triangle ABC. Right here. Right here. And we just found out that ABC is 64. If ABC is 64, this guy is going to be 1 16th of that amount, it is just 64 over 16, which happens to be 4. The point is that this information that they give us is quite sufficient for us to establish the area of the triangle RCS. The first statement by itself is quite sufficient. First statement by itself is quite sufficient. A D B C E. A D B C E. Now that we have established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Now let's look at the second statement. And if it turns out that the second statement by itself is also sufficient, in which case the answer would be D. And if the second statement turns out to be not sufficient, then the answer would be A. Let's look at second statement. I need a, I need a quick break. All, right. All of this information has to go. But not this part. This part has nothing to do with the first, first statement. This part came from the problem itself. And this red line has to go. This red line, this triangle ABX, came from the first statement. That has to go. Again, the question is, what's the area of RCX? In the second statement, they tell us, in the second statement, they tell us that the length of one of the altitude of ABC equals 8. Now, before we go any further, let's just make sure that we understand this concept that they're talking about. What do they mean by the length of one of the altitude of triangle ABC? For crying out loud, how many altitudes does it have? To which the answer is, any given triangle, any given triangle consists of three pairs, three pairs of bases and the corresponding altitudes. Any triangle would have three altitudes. For example, let me give a simple example. For example, if you have a triangle like this, I'm just going to draw something here. Let's give it a, let's give it a name here. Let's call it PQR. PQR. If we're going to if we're going to treat PR as the base, if we're going to treat PR as the base, then the corresponding height, corresponding height, or altitude as they call it, the corresponding height or altitude with the side PR, if you're going to treat PR as the base, then what we're asking ourselves is that from this bottom here, from this base, what's the highest point in the picture? Well, the highest point in the picture, looking from this vantage point, this is looking from this point of view, is point Q. And we have to find out how high is it from the ground. This, this distance right here, let's give it a name here, let's call it, let's call it PQR, let's call it S. So the height would be Q to S. But that's, that's, just one, that's just one altitude. On the other hand, if you were to treat point P to Q, if you were to treat point P to Q as our base, if you were to treat point P to Q as our base, then the question is, looking from that point of view, from this vantage point, looking from here, it's upside down, we ask ourselves, how high is the highest point? The highest point in the picture is this one, and we have to draw a 90 degree angle. And that distance right here, from here to here, we have P, Q, R, S, let's call it T. So T to R would be the altitude. And there is one more. There is one more. So we did PR, we did PQ, now we have to do RQ. RQ. And if RQ is the base, if RQ is the base, then looking from that vantage point, the higher I should I, I shouldn't have. Let me do it in a different color so we can see it easily. Because I made it very crowded here. So now if, the, if we treat this as a base, if this is our base. If you're going to treat this as the base, then we have to extend this out, just like before. Drop the perpendicular from here, at a 90 degree, at a 90 degree. And this distance that you see there, we are up to T, P, Q, R, S, T, let's call this point U. P to U, P to U is the corresponding altitude, corresponding height, if you're going to treat P to R, rather Q to R, Q to R, 
is our base. If Q to R is the base, then the altitude is this, the height is this. From that vantage point, from that point of view, the highest point of the picture is point P. When we drop a perpendicular, we, have, we measure this distance and that's our height, P to U. But the point, point we are trying to make here is that it has three altitudes. And what they are telling us is that one of those altitudes happens to be 8. Is that enough for us to figure out the area of this small triangle, simply knowing one of the altitude? For example, if, we, if for example, if they were telling us that this is 8, simply knowing that C to F is 8, if we treat A to B in this, in this particular case, in this particular case, if we were to treat A to B as the base, which would be the simplest case to do with, or deal with, the simplest case to, to set it up as, if we were to set up A to B as the base, because it's easy to see, in which case C to F would be the altitude. Simply knowing that C to F is 8, is that enough for us to figure out the area of the large, small triangle? Answer of course is not. Answer of course is no. We do know that the area of the small triangle is 1 16th of the large triangle. We know, but in order to figure out the area of the large triangle, not only we need to know that the altitude is 8, not only we need to know that the altitude is 8, but they also have to tell us that the corresponding base for this altitude is AB, and they have to give us the length of the AB. We know one of the altitude is 8, we do not know which, which altitude they are talking about, and since we do not know which altitude they are talking about, we cannot figure out what is the corresponding base. And secondly, even if we did know what the corresponding base is, even if we did know exactly which altitude they are talking about, we don't, know the, we don't know the length of the base. Therefore, we cannot figure out the area of the triangle ABC, and if we cannot figure out the area of the triangle ABC, we cannot figure out the area of the triangle RCS, because RCS is 1 16th of the area of the triangle ABC. Second statement does not do the job. Second statement does not do the job. The answer is A. Answer is A. And that's all there was. That's all there was. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.